Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video we're going to take a look at some model trains. So I picked up this uh, train set recently. It's not too long ago and I thought I'd do a little video on it. The Bachman Henscale Durango and Silverton train set. I noticed a few things different about this train set than other Bachman sets that I've had. One of the things is Bachman has learned how to pack things properly. Uh, I've got two older sets and uh, I grab one of the boxes here. This is the Bachman Thunder Valley train set. Uh, it comes with a circle of track, power pack with accessory ports, three cars, and a locomotive. Anyway, the problem I have with this kit is packing. Now, uh, how they package this kit the locomotive and cars are up front. The wall power pack is up here, cabling is stored in these shelves, and the power box is right in this section here. And track is stored on the back of the box, and little cutouts back here. So when you open the box, track is just going to fall out if you're not careful. And I don't really like that. This kit... This set's different though. I really like it. In fact, I'm actually going to pull the styrofoam out of its box to show you why I like it. So first off, I'm going to show you the back of the styrofoam. Alright, so you get some cutouts, uh, maybe to store some spare track, and switches, switch boxes, kind of like these, I don't know. But now let me flip over to the front of the box and show you what I really like about this set. Locomotive and tender are stored here. Your three coaches are stored down here. Four pieces of straight track are stored here. The wall power box is stored in here. Your power speed controller is here. And right here, your four straightaways and all of the curve track you need is all right here. So I can pull it out of the box like this, take the cover off like this, and nothing spills out. Unless you've got like things on the back side, but that's a different story. Now, something else I want to talk about with this train set. First off, it's a very, very nice set. I do really like it. But uh, here's one of the problems with the set that may or may not be a problem. Depending on who you are, it's really not that big a problem. The couplers, the kit supplied couplers, can be problematic. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this. Here it is. This is the coupler that will come on the locomotive when you first get it out of the box. I've lost the coupler. I've found the coupler. This is the top of the coupler. It's just straight bare molded plastic. 
and one of the problems with this coupler is the tendency for the train to decouple at any time. I've noticed, I'm going to try to show this guys, it will couple up but somehow, some way, there's just enough of something to go wrong that they just uncouple. So, I had to swap the couplers out and instead I have to run the backup repeaters and the repeater coupler is doing a mighty fantastic job of keeping this train all in one piece I really it's uh, the repeater couplers from what I've seen are not very realistic let's be honest they're not realistic at all and a lot of guys do not like running repeaters for that reason lack of realism however with this train set and for the time being I'm going to be running the repeaters because the knuckle couplers that I've shown you do not do a good job of holding this train together now we take a look here at the repeato it's very big and chunky uh, actually I'm going to move this train and I'm just going to pull one of the uh, cars off and I'm going to show you the coupler I'm going to let the train continue to run so we have the uh, ambient uh, locomotive sounds in the background okay so we come over here and this is the This is all being done on the ground level, so bear with me. Shut this off. Unplug this, rerun the wiring. We have a light mounted to my bed, which needs to be relocated at some time. But it's doing a good job of giving us lighting. Okay, here we go. We're going to try this again. Demonstrating what a repeater coupler looks like and how they operate. The lights always have to be on the other side. Always. Okay, so that's fixed enough for the video. Good. This is the Rapido coupler. It is not very realistic looking in any way, but look at the size of this coupler. It is very tall, per se. Let me find a toothpick. I guess for scale comparison. Oh, here, here we go. First off, this is the Rapido, and this is a knuckle coupler versus the Rapido. The knuckle coupler. This one is a realistic one. This is a Bachmann Silver Series coupler. It has an air hose and a spring. This is the Rapido coupler. Now the Rapido is a very tall coupler, so it's not prone to uh, 
uncoupling as bad as other couplers. And in fact, I'm gonna try to see if I can show you how these couple up to each other. Speed the train up just a bit. And I'm going to slow it back down to a stop here. I'm going to re rail this car and I'm going to try and display this to you. So the repeaters are angled it's hard to see but there's a triangular shape right here and this triangular shape allows either one to slip over or under the other So, just like that. And because they're tall and chunky, they're not going to uncouple as easy because of how much plastic is there. And so for the time being, I have to run the Rapido couplers on this train set. I just want to say though, uh, in this little video, I really like this train set, it's pretty cool, pretty neat. I think if I wanted to do anything to it, I would buy some buff, uh, like on this one here, how it has a spring on it. I might try finding some Bachman premium couplers, whatever they're called, and then swap them out for this train. So, uh, yeah, it's a short little video on the Bachman N-Gage Durango and Silverton train set. I uh, just wanted to do a little quick uh, video on it, give you my thoughts on the train. Like I said, it's a pretty good train set. Only problem I noticed was the couplers. You need to use the Rapidos or buy new couplers. Because the kit plastic ones just don't do a good job of holding the train together. Another thing I noticed is the power boxes have been changed. On the right, we have an older style, which has auxiliary ports here. And this one, which came with the set, has no auxiliary ports. It's just power in, power to track, front and back and speed. The power to wall mount boxes are a bit different. One's a DC-16, the other one's an AC-16. I don't really know if that means anything, but uh, if we come over here to this wall, we can see this is what's running right now. This, this one is what comes with the other train sets. This one that I'm holding up is much bigger than the one that's plugged in. Uh, so yes, a lot of things have kind of changed, I guess. Or that's just, I don't know. 
something's changed. Uh, if you want to run switching operations, you're going to want to use the bigger box and you're going to want to use this. So you have your uh, switch auxiliary connections here. This, uh, this kit only gives you this. So you're really only able to run a circle of track, or in this case a rectangle. Not a rectangle, yeah, it's technically a rectangle. Actually, no, no, it's an oval. No, this is the rectangle. Yes. I've modified this to have a short straight here. But the factory kit only gives you an oval. This straight wouldn't come with this set. I do plan on making a uh, little train layout one of these days. Actual scenery and stuff. If we're gonna use this train set, we might do like a western themed. It is a very smooth runner, I will say. I do like the uh, performance of this locomotive. Very smooth. Uh, for what it's for what it needs to do, it's very smooth. I will say, however, it will not pull this car. This has a track cleaning pad on the bottom. It's got weights in it. It's very heavy and that has a lot of friction to it. And the little 060 locomotive that the train is, this set gives you, will not pull it. I've already tried. It doesn't really work. <laughs> but, like I said, it's for the train set that it is, and what it has to pull, which is the uh, old timer coaches there, it's very good, very smooth. I like the way it runs. That was, a, that was a switch box, by the way, that sound you were hearing. Well guys, I hope you like this interesting little video. I think it's a first for the channel, first time I've done some train base. And if you liked it, if you want to see more train videos, I can certainly try putting out more uh, N scale, even double O gauge. I have a Hornby double O gauge Flying Scotsman. Train said, if you want to see a video on that too, I can try doing that for you guys. Yeah, let me know. Like the video. If you liked it, leave a comment. Consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, uh, make sure you stay on track and hopefully those rails are straight and smooth.
Let's see if I can get one more shot of the train coming in before we close out here. Good enough. We'll wait for it to come by one more time. This time I'm sure I can get it just right. There it comes. Watch for it in the upper left screen. There it is. Here it comes around the corner. And it just cleared my phone going around that corner. Alright, well I hope you all liked that video. Uh, like I said, like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below if you liked it, didn't like it. You want to see something different on the channel. I'm Uncle No Identity. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.